Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to review the King's Grand Tour rooftop tent. We've been living out of this full time on the road now for pretty much bang on two months. And uh, today I'm just going to go over some of the pros and cons. Now this is the first rooftop tent we've actually ever owned. I was never very keen on the ones that you have to open up like a clamshell and then zip a big uh, cover back on. Never really appealed. And before that we've always had a crash pad swag. A uh, big double swag, which was really handy. We were skeptical about moving into a rooftop tent, but decided because we'll be in it full time, it'll be a lot easier. Now, we're really happy with it so far, especially for the price as the first big pro for this. We bought it for pretty much bang on $2,000, and then it was a couple of hundred dollars for shipping. So that makes the, the competition roughly around five, five and a half K, uh, Australian that is, so it's been really good in that respect so that's already a massive pro for us and i went into this purchase knowing that if there were any bits and pieces that weren't too serious that i would need to fix or maybe change i knew that we had a big budget that we could kind of work with to fix anything we needed to and it would still be way under the competition in regards to price so that's the first big pro second big pro i'm about six foot two and pretty big and then I'm obviously sleeping in it with Ange as well and I needed something that was a decent size and that was something I was concerned about by going with one of those uh, ones that pop up uh, as these do but it's really long so I never really touch the bottom I never really touch the top it's a really good size if I was maybe 6'4 or taller then it might become a problem that's been really good so there's another pro there it's nice and big third pro is it looks really good we removed the massive big Adventure King sticker from the top front of it. It still says King on the side, um, which I don't mind at all because at least it's stamped in metal. Um, so I just removed the sticker and it looks fine. Now another pro is the fact that you can mount things to it. So we're going to have a King Wing awning that Adventure Kings also sell. Mount that to the slider rail on the side. And then I just chucked a couple of bolts into the very top and mounted my max tracks. So that works really well. Saves me having to uh, sort out some sort of mounting system. It would also be really easy to stick a, like a semi-flexible solar panel to. And I've noticed on their website, they are now selling crossbars for this as well that fit into the rails. And they're not very expensive either. So there's one of my pros there, is that it's easy to attach things to. And that's come in really handy for us already. What is one of the other pros, Ange? Easy to set up and pack. Another pro and a really big one for us is it's incredibly easy to set up and pack down. Now we're used to a swag which is super fast but this seems to be even faster especially if you're not putting out the side wings uh, which go on like a steel rod type of system to hold it up. I'll go over that soon. Um, that's been excellent. If you don't use those you can keep it rolled up with little flaps packing down packing up packing down packing up packing down packing up is super super fast. So we're talking like under a minute to put it up and sometimes under a minute to pack it down uh, we can time that and show you soon how easy that is so that's a really big pro for us you can fit all of your bedding your pillows bits and pieces in there and it will shut perfectly on top of it so that's a big pro for us and the final pro that i can think of is the install time i ended up taking it to my mate who's a mechanic he chucked it up on a big hoist which was higher than the jeep and then we just slid it straight on and then it's got a couple of attachment um, almost like a u-bolt that just fits over your cross rails and that's pretty universal fits so if you've got any kind of crossbar system on your four-wheel drive uh, it should be nice and simple as long as you can get it up on top of your car this thing's really tall uh, so I was considering getting a bunch of mates around but it ended up being really easy to put it on that uh, that car hoist so there are your pros all right and now quickly on to the cons there aren't too many of them but there are a few they're not a big deal so first one is as you're driving the front edge of the rooftop tent when it's shut obviously in driving rain it was pushing water into the actual tent now that's our feet on that end that's how we've chosen to sleep on it we've got our head at this end here our feet on the other end that was getting pretty saturated and sometimes we were only driving through rain for maybe an hour and it was it was pretty wet down there and then we had to spend maybe uh, half a day letting it dry out which is really annoying now we got one of the first ones because we pre-ordered it i think i've seen on youtube another review the guy who's got it up it looks like they've got a second seal now all we did is we went to bunnings bought a rubber seal super cheap not a big deal i think it was like a five meter roll we 
uh, stuck that around the front leading edge and that seems to have helped a lot. Now I also went ahead and just proactively siliconed up every single rivet that I could find just in case those leaked. I don't know if they would have, my feeling is they may have done so. The other con is it does get quite a lot of condensation, so on a cold night if you zip the, uh, the side windows up quite high, uh, I find in the morning there'll be a lot of water all over the aluminium inside, whatever aluminium that's showing that's not carpeted, that can be very wet and have some like proper droplets on it. And that can also seem to wet our bottom sheet kind of around the edges. It's not a really big deal and it dries fast, but it definitely is a bit of a con there. I would imagine the more expensive rooftop tents are probably weather sealed a little bit better and they may even breathe a little bit better. Can't really say for sure because I haven't owned another rooftop tent. You guys in the comments can let me know if that's a problem off yours as well. What's another con, Ange? The mattress. Now, the main big con for us, and this one really ticked us off, because when we were on the road, we actually, before that, didn't get a chance to put this thing up and sleep in it for a night. We were just hoping it would be sweet. I'm a pretty heavy guy, I'm about 100 kilos, and the mattress inside is super, super firm. So I was actually getting like sore legs and stuff in the night, having to toss and turn, it sucked. So what Ange and I did is we went to Kmart, had no other real option on the road at that stage and we bought two thin foam mattress toppers they weren't dear I think they were about 30 bucks a roll so we bought two of those I'll show you in a minute we've put those on the top and then put a fitted sheet around that and it's fixed it perfectly now we sleep like babies it's been really really good uh, one of the other cons is the same with all rooftop tents especially the fact that this is a hard shell is it does weigh around about 80 kilograms so it's something to bear in mind this Jeep's already pretty heavy so it's added to that and then obviously you're putting that weight the worst place you want it which is up high changing that center of gravity so it's something to be aware of when we recently did climbies i actually took the ladder out of it because it does weigh a little bit the telescopic ladder and i chucked that down low in the car and the last con it's not a real big one and it could have been our user error uh, it does come with quite a quite a cool uh, telescopic aluminium ladder now the first couple of nights we used it we were on a dried up uh it was almost like a dried up lake and it had some sand and it was a wet night now when we packed it up in the morning a little bit of that sand got in the grooves of that telescopic ladder which will happen to you guys if you go anywhere near sand anyway since then it's kind of jammed the opening and closing mechanism i've since hit up uh forward drive super center and uh, sending out a new ladder straight away the buckle on it broke but apart from that the ladder works well it's a good height uh, it's just, it's now, you just have to be really careful of it. If it scratches up, it just won't open and shut smoothly. And if you're doing that every day, it gets really annoying. So those are the, uh, the pros and cons. And now I'll just take you through a little bit of a tour of the tent and how we're using it, what we find works for us, what's kind of annoying. Yeah. All right, so these are the mounts I was talking about, the sliding rails. That means that you can mount this little ladder mount, if you will just has three bolts you can put that anywhere on the rooftop tent that you like you can put it around the other side or you can put it on the back I've chosen to put it on the driver's side because the spare wheel uh, would actually obstruct this ladder position so that's a really that, that's a really handy feature with this tent this is what it looks like all set up uh, with the awnings out now something to bear in mind is on a windy night these flap around a lot there's a lot of movement in the steel uh, poles. I mean I like the design and that it's really simple but it does flap around a hell of a lot. Now with the zips on the side you can I see now by uh, a wall that comes all the way to the floor I would imagine that would be way worse in the wind. Uh, I, I can't say for sure but there's no way I would even consider buying those at this stage. So just bear that in mind there's a heap of movement there. So obviously this is the leading edge this is with it up uh, now you can see they've got the two mounting rails on either side at the very top. It'll be really easy to chuck a solar panel on there, which we'll probably do pretty soon. I've just mounted the Max Tracks. Uh, I just slid two bolts in with a couple of wing nuts. Uh, that's been all good and it's very durable. So we did like climbies, we've smashed through a few tracks here in Tassie that um, have hit a lot of branches along this leading edge. Couple of scratches, absolutely fine, not a dent on it. Uh, it seems really sturdy. All right, so here is the, the roof nest. Heaps of room, we really like it. Uh, looks pretty spick as well with the carpet. There's carpet on the top and there's carpet underneath the mattress on the bottom, which is pretty cool. Now, this roof is insulated from what I've seen online. There are insulated panels underneath. 
we haven't had the issue, so I can't really comment on it, but we've heard of other people who were some of the first adopters of this tent. The whole roof was actually caving in. Since then, uh, Adventure Kings or Four Drive Supercenter, whatever it is, has actually fixed that issue, but it hasn't been a problem for us. Now, this is where I was talking about we get quite a lot of condensation is all along the aluminium rails, including along the bottom aluminium rails as well. Now, where that touches our sheets, it creates a lot of wet, obviously, so a lot of wet points. Um, now, the way we've run it, if you show down here, Ange. So, the way we've fixed that mattress, this is the mattress here, but it's very, very hard. And that didn't seem to be getting any softer. So, we bought a couple of Kmart, like, mattress foam toppers, I guess. Uh, pretty cheap, and they've worked really well. They don't feel like much, but they have had a huge impact on on the sleeping quality for us and we've just tucked that on top and then away it goes like so okay so this is how the windows work we've got mosquito net mesh first it's an interesting idea the way that they've done this first but i actually see why they do it and i prefer it so this way we can have the canvas flap down which is on separate zips uh, and we can have as much ventilation as we want creates a little bit of privacy as well. You can see through it, but you've got to look quite hard. Uh, and then usually the way we have it is we'll just have these up and the flaps in, and we'll do that on all sides. And it works really well, you get heaps of ventilation. It's nice. So that's how those work. You've got a support pole that just screws in and comes out every time you want to pack it down. I don't think we've, we've even had a night where we've needed to use this and we've been in some really strong wind but we just chuck it up just to take some load off those gas struts so that just goes in and screws perfect easy setup now i'll show you these poles okay so four of these two short ones on either side and two long ones in the front this is what holds these flaps up and they just hook like so and they fit into little grooves works really well done and dusted but they do move a lot in the wind but easy to remove the poles scrunch these up and there's velcro all along it so we'll often do that on most nights that it's not raining just because the wind can be a real bugger so pretty clever they've actually made a little like an opening a zip opening that allows you to run some cable in so i've run one usb extension cord and one um, extension for the 12 volt so we charge both of our phones in here every night they live in the pocket and then i run this other cable along to my side where at the moment we're just lighting up a luma noodle and we've just velcroed that using the using the carpet so that's worked really well so i like that design feature Alrighty, now I'll get Ange to time the pack down. And again, keep in mind that often you won't even need these up, so it is very fast. Alright, Ange, hold that phone up and press go. A minute and 15 seconds. All right, yeah, not bad, eh? So now we'll film the setup and how quick that is just with one person. Please bear in mind, again, we often don't actually set up the awning thing, so it can be much faster than this as well. And just chuck that phone up to the camera and press go.
And that was a minute 30. Yeah, pretty good. And again, normally you don't even have to set those up. Thanks for tuning into the review, guys. Hopefully that answered some questions for you. Uh, if you have any more, please let me know in the comments. Happy to answer any of them. Overall, pretty happy with the tent. It's going really, really well so far. And for the money, it's pretty bang on. Cheers.